Today we're going to wire the yard tracks at Evanston. That's coming right up. I'm Roy Smith. Wiring is a task that many people say they don't like doing. Well, I'm here to tell you that it doesn't have to be an odious task. You might even find it to be satisfying when it's well done and everything works the way you want it to. Before we start to do some wiring work, let me remind you that we share the hobby of model railroading on this channel. So if you like to share the hobby, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done it yet, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any upcoming episodes. Each week, I upload Dispatch, a variety show for model railroaders on Tuesday nights, and layout updates on Saturday mornings. Or at least that's what I try to do as long as real life doesn't get in the way of the hobby and sadly it sometimes does. But like I said, we're going to wire the yard tracks at Evanston today and we're going to get started on it right after this westbound coal train clears the tracks at Evanston. This is the area that we are going to wire. It consists of five yard tracks at Evanston. The first two tracks you see here are, of course, part of the Evanston subdivision main line. Beyond the main line are the yard tracks. The first two tracks in the yard are what I like to call interchange tracks. The next two tracks serve the Evanston Tank Car Company. And the last track is where I will put one or two industries. In a future video, you will see operations on all three of these sets of tracks. We're going to start by dropping the red and black wires for the turnouts down through the plywood sub road bed. Doing this with Kato Unitrack is very easy. I start by taking the track apart and marking the exact location for the hole in the plywood. I'm now drilling a pilot hole. Perhaps it isn't necessary to drill a pilot hole, but I prefer to do it. Now I come back with a one half inch paddle bit in my drill. This allows me to drill a hole large enough for the wires to fit down through easily, plus ample room to adjust the exact location of the turnout as needed. Now I'm dropping the turnout wires down through the hole. In truth, I plan to operate these turnouts manually as I do nearly all of the turnouts on my layout. So it's possible that I will never actually connect the turnout wires to power, but I, I want to keep them under the layout in case I ever change my mind and end up connecting the turnout wires to NCE switch cats that would enable me to throw the turnouts remotely. Of course, Kato turnouts have built-in switch motors, and I don't need to install tortoises or any other kind of switch machines. As you can see, the wires for this turnout are now under the layout and no longer visible. Here's the end of those turnout wires that I just dropped down through the plywood. I'm going to label them so that in the future, I will know which turnout they go to. I simply attach a piece of masking tape to the wires and since they go to the first turnout in the yard, I write the number one on the masking tape with a sharpie. I have already written the number one on the plywood next to the turnout itself. Now I've dropped the turnout wires for the other four turnouts off camera. This is what the yard looks like with no wires laying around on top of the layout. What a difference. I also write the turnout numbers on a copy of my track plan to further ensure that I don't get confused in the future about which wires under the layout go to which turnout on top of the layout. I use red numbers to do this. In a moment, you will see that I use 
blue numbers for the drop feeders that I am going to install next. Okay, next I'm going to install drop feeders on each of the five yard tracks. Cato calls its drop feeders terminal unit joiners. Like any other brand of drop feeders, they bring power to the track. They come in packs like this. I will need one of these for each yard track. This is what the terminal unit joiners look like when you take them out of the pack. They come with three foot long feeder wires that get connected to the layout bus wires under the layout. I like to first stretch out the wires to remove any kinks. I'm going to install this first set of terminal unit joiners right here. In order to do this, I take the track sections apart. I remove the regular unit joiners using this handy little blue plastic tool that comes in every pack of terminal unit joiners. I will be replacing the regular unit joiners with the terminal unit joiners. I don't have to solder drop feeders to the track in order to bring power to my track. I'm glad about that because I hate to do soldering. I must make sure that I install the white wire on the same rail all the way around the layout and likewise the blue wire. If I get them reversed, there will be a short on my layout that might be hard to find later on. I can't emphasize this point strongly enough. Now I mark the spot where I will drill a hole to drop the feeder wires down through the plywood. And then I drill the hole. I always vacuum up the sawdust before dropping the feeders through the hole and reinstalling the track. I cut off this white plug. I won't be using it to connect the feeder wires to the bus wires under the layout. Now I drop the feeders through the hole and reconnect the track. And there you have it. The first of the five terminal unit joiners have been installed in the track. It's that easy. And in a moment, I'll show you where I connect the wires to power under the layout. I bring the feeder wires up from under the layout so that I can label them with a number, just as I did with the turnout wires. These, which I just installed, are feeder wires number one and I write the number on the plywood where I installed the terminal unit joiners as well. Now I'm going to install the other four sets of terminal unit joiners off camera. And here's another copy of my track plan for this part of my layout showing the numbers of the drop feeders. I used red numbers for the turnout wires as you saw a moment ago and on this copy of the plan I'm using blue numbers to distinguish the feeder wires from the turnout wires. This diagram might prove to be very helpful in the future because I certainly won't be able to remember in my head which section of track each of the feeder wires went to. Now I'm going to show you how I connect the feeder wires to the bus wires. Again, I bring the feeder wires up onto the layout so that I can see what I'm doing and can work on them easily. I don't like to work under the layout if I absolutely don't have to. 
I strip the plastic coating off the ends of each of the two feeder wires. Since the wires are stranded rather than solid, I give them a little twist to hold the strands together. Now I install spade connectors on each of the two wires. Under the layout, I connect the feeder wires to terminal barrier strips and layout bus wires are also connected to the barrier strips. I like this method far better than using suitcase connectors or soldering the drop feeders directly to the bus wires. It helps keep everything neat and organized and easy to troubleshoot later on if necessary. The white feeders go to a terminal barrier strip for white wires and the blue feeders go to their separate barrier strip. I use the same colors of wires for the bus wires and drop feeders, that is blue and white. Doing this helps to avoid confusion and a catastrophic reversal of polarity. All right, it's time to test the yard tracks to make sure everything's working properly. I'm using an SD40-2, which is now sitting on the yard lead to do this. First, I run the locomotive to a set of tracks that I call interchange tracks. After throwing the turnouts, I run it to the industrial spur. And finally, to the Union Tank Car Company tracks. Everything is working just fine. And here comes that coal train, now empty, having delivered its load somewhere to the west of the area I'm modeling. There you have it. Evanston Yard is all wired up, but there's still tons of other work to do in the renovation of this part of my layout. I hope you will come back each Saturday morning as I continue to work on this renovation. And don't forget about Dispatch on Tuesday nights when I get to interact with you. Until next time then, I'm Roy Smith. Happy railroading.